Welcome to the Magical Holistic Healing Arts Podcast. I'm Lynn Hicks. I'm Eric Hicks. And we're the mother-daughter duo, curiously investigating the healing and expressive arts for ways to take care of our sacred body vessel. We are also bringing awareness to antioxidant water and the ultimate sustainability tool. And if you want to learn more about the water revolution, check the links below. On today's episode, we have Brenda Ridgely, and she is sharing some great information on her book, Lady in the Tribe. She's a girlfriend guru, author, and um, entrepreneur. And it was really fun learning and chatting about women and the connection that we really resonate and need to have a healthful life. Yeah, she gives tips and tricks on how to start your tribe, how to start friendships in general, as we've had such a crazy year with this whole you know what. And so it was so awesome to hear what she has to offer to the world and that she's all about connecting people and connecting women. Yep. So grab your earbuds and take a listen and enjoy the magic. Today we welcome Brenda Ridgely, an author of Lady in the Tribe, entrepreneur and girlfriend guru. And we're just going to set right in and ask Brenda, what is your magical art? Oh gosh. So that's a great question. What is my, my magical art, I believe, is connecting, connecting people to other people, uh, creating experiences where people gather, uh, connecting people to th- resources and products and solutions that they need. Uh, I just love helping others and being of service in a way of connecting. Mm, yeah. Love that. We definitely need that right now as we've been so disconnected the past year and a half. So to really bring people together and to use everyone's gifts or, you know, as you said, um, connect them with anything, not just, you know, lady tribes or friends. It's you, you seem to have, a, yeah, the magical art of just connecting in all realms. Thank you. I, I, I'm, I'm working on it. It's a work in progress. <laughs> well, good. And so tell us how you relate that and writing your book or being the girlfriend guru Um, obviously women are about nourishing, they're about connection. It's really important for us. Um, But you had published your book. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? It goes all the way back to my childhood. When I was a kid, my parents liked to move a lot. They liked to upgrade and get the next biggest, best house. And they were very, uh, you know, successful and driven professionals. So we did that about every two to five years. We would completely move households, usually neighborhoods, sometimes even towns and cities where we moved. And so as a result, I was always the new kid in almost every situation. So I, you know, had to scramble a bit and try to figure out how I fit in every, in each new situation and try to be likable and try to you know, be interesting and try to just, you know, add value so that people, so that this new friend group would see one, it would include me and bring me into their group, which usually was a child, a a childhood group that had grown up together, you know, since kindergarten. So I, you know, I think that piece right there makes me feel really, really strong about my connections and my girlfriends and um, the relationships in my life. And, you know, when I, um, you know, was in high school and college, I, especially in college, I nurtured, I started nurturing, you know, I started nurturing my tribe, let's just say. I didn't know that's what it was at the time. But um, when I got married and, you know, subsequently had children, I started um, kind of neglecting those relationships. And it wasn't intentional at all. You know, it just became, they came, became a casualty of a busy life. And especially when you become a mother, you know this, Lynn, um, your whole world changes. It's upside down. You, th- you know, people tell you your life is going to be different. And, and I remember saying, oh, yeah, of course it is. I know I have a dog. It changed my life. You know? <laughs> but uh, you, you come out of that experience a different person. And I was very much just, I, I thought my new purpose and like my purpose, probably the reason I was born was to have these children and to raise them up to be contributors and, and be, have great, healthy full lives. So everything that I was about and interested in and my friendships and everything that made me, brought me joy just as an individual 
slowly, I just started letting those things go. I didn't realize I was doing it, but instead of uh, my get togethers with girlfriends, it would be my kids play dates. Instead of me get, getting the gang together for, to have another season of softball, stop doing that. I was just, I was the soccer mom now. Um, so slowly by slow, slowly by slowly, little by little, I just kind of let go over of all my preferences, interests, and friendships over about a period of 15 years. It's not like I didn't have friends. It was just that those friends did not have the depth and the meaning and the, they didn't know me anymore like they used to. And as human beings, we just long to be known and belong, right? So when my kids entered high school, I started having this apprehension, this freak out moment, like, oh my gosh, my world, my world, my purpose is about to leave and go away. And, and I won't have any control of it anymore. <laughs> and who am I without this role as mom? And uh, gosh, for I'd say six months to a year, I just kind of floundered hanging on to every moment I could. You know, I tried to make all these things happen, these memories, creating them. And I came to a point in time when um, I was at a networking group and one of my friends who was already an empty nester was visiting and, and she was, she said, um, I was talking about a trip that was coming up that I was like, oh, I wish I could do that. I can't because, you know, I've got kids in school still. And then I had this aha moment. I'm like, um, you know what? That's something I'm going to get to do when this journey is over. So I started intentionally thinking of putting together a get to list. And a big part of that was reconnecting with my girlfriends and friendships. And so I put an intentional effort to get them on my calendar and start creating experiences with them so that I had a purpose and a, and a life and a world beyond motherhood. So very long answer. I hope that was what you're looking for. No, I think it's really important to discuss these things because women, we do, we get involved in it. It's a lot of work to raise children. And you do end up making friends along the way with the different parents that you're doing things with, but it's not the same as the friendships that you have on an individual basis. And when I was in Pennsylvania, I was lucky to always have a lot of people from a long time that really supported me and we always gathered almost monthly and did a lot of girl yeah you know you were at the farm yeah. um, <laughs> and we were very strong in making certain that we had that connect going on um, because it is important and you do get lost so it's a great topic to bring up and it's not like anything anyone does on purpose it's just a time thing but and I guess maybe it, it, it could even be part of that evolution that we you know, we do entrenching kids and then as they get older, like happened with you, you know what I mean? You start to go, oh, I better start. Because <laughs> I can remember I became a flower farmer thinking, okay, when Erica leaves, I'll have this wonderful job that I enjoy and this whole thing. And I started that when she was more, um, you know, in middle school, knowing that day would come. <laughs> um, but you, you know, the emptiness is still a very different thing. But I I'm really glad you're bringing this attention because I think a lot of women too don't know the power of women connection and how mm -hmm. fun it is. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it wasn't just losing my role as a mother. Uh, even before that, a couple of years before that, I just started having this empty feeling, this space, like, you know, the feeling of just like dissatisfaction a little bit but why I've got this great house and I'm wonderful. I've got a wonderful husband. My kids are happy and healthy and, and contributors and everything's great on the outside. Every, you know, I've got this picture, perfect social media, put all the good stuff out there life. And, but I feel like something is missing and I am not content. Why? And so that was what, you know, that was the first step. And I think a lot of women out there have that, empty feeling and they don't know what it is mm. and it really is connection to other people especially women who are nurturing women who just love you because they if you they're not bound to you by family ties they're not bound to you by some kind of contract marriage business whatever but just choose you yeah that gave me chills when you said that I totally feel like that is something that 
women are missing. I mean, every aspect of your lives. I mean, I'm still new to Colorado and I'm finally, not very new, but to Longmont and I'm finally connecting with women and community after like three years of being here. So um, yeah, I just think everyone is probably craving connection, especially women because it has been such a masculine world that we need to come together and have these different things. So um, can you can you talk a little bit more about your book? We'd love to hear about that. Yeah, gosh, it's been such a joyous creation process. I always kind of thought I might have a book in me, but I didn't know what it was. And um, I did this crazy thing. I was part of the Mrs. Colorado pageant process last year. And I hired a coach because I've never done anything like the, that. It was crazy, way out of my comfort zone. Um, and she asked, you know, what legacy do you want to leave? What, you know, what, what are you going to bring to the table that adds value to the organization? And I had just gone through this experience and I thought, oh my gosh, I feel whole for like the first time in many years right now. And I want to share that journey with others and point out what we're missing and point out. And not only that, but share some friendship stories and share um, a blueprint, a starting point, no matter where you are, where you can start and make a diff- little bit of a difference every day, every week, every month, every year mm. to create a tribe of your own. And the book's called Lady in the Tribe, How to Create Empowering Friendship Circles. And it's just been a labor of love. I literally, I believe that it was just gifted to me. I was a conduit. I was just typing out the words as they came to me um, because I was so passionate about it and it wasn't work at all. I didn't experience any kind of block. I know that it happened within 10 weeks of starting to finish. I had the manuscript and it was off to the editing team. So uh, it's, it's been just a joyous creative process. Uh, I would, my goal with this work it, just in the next year is to create a thousand new lady tribes across the globe. Um, and can you imagine, uh, you know, in my book, I describe a tribe as when three or more gather, we are tribe. So, because if you have just one other person, if it's two of you, you've got your best friends, <laughs> right? But when you add a third person, you start your tribe and the magic number, there's no absolute definitive number for tribe. It can be whatever is best for you, but somewhere between five or six people in your tribe, because it's, it is an intimate um, group and it's not exclusive. It's not like a click. It is absolutely um, a inclusive environment um, because my tribe um, who includes my sister and, you know, my junior high friend and my high school friend and another gal that I met along the way about 15 years ago. Um, each of them have their own tribe, even though I am, I'm the leader of my own tribe of, of six. Uh, my sister, Bobby, I'm in her tribe, but she has other people that are part of her tribe. The people that fill her up, you know, take her, take her out of her comfort zone and, and do experiences with it that interest her. So it is actually becomes this interconnected network, what do I call a kindred clan that could just hug the globe with connection. And um, so I'm kind of forgetting even what your question was, but uh, my goal is to create those, those lady, those thousand lady tribes. And if we do that, can you imagine the power of the connection that will happen? Hey listeners, did you know that we sell Kangen Water Ionizers? We consider it the number one sustainability tool because not only do we get to drink the best hydrogen rich antioxidant water, we also get to detox our home from all the chemicals and cleaners, get to use some of the seven kinds of water for different health ales, and we save the earth of plastic and toxins. Yes, and who doesn't want to help this earth back to homeostasis, just like our bodies? Researchers show now that hydrogen is the number one antioxidant you can add to your life. So what easier way than just changing the type of water you're drinking for you and your family? This water is micro-clustered, so it can actually hydrate you at a cellular level, helping your longevity, your immunity, and your vitality. So if you want to help us spread the awareness of Kangen water ionizers, 
and purchase one today, check the links below and join our team and help us spread the word about healing water. All right, let's get back to the magic. Yeah, um, and you know, it's women really already are connected to me. I always talk about there's a silent connection between family and even if someone doesn't have a full tribe of five, they know two other people perhaps, that if you activated it and there'd be no uh, list or you call these people that it would activate such a network because the women are just naturally connected. It's kind of part of our biology from having children, um, being able to have children and stuff. We just have this very uh, strong network and connection. So I love that idea and have been part of the feminine arts and sharing about women for 10 years. Um, and just, you You're know, in the book too, aren't you? I am, I am in That's the book. Right. <laughs> Oh, yes. Uh, she has a couple uh, footnotes even. Yes. Yes. So I have made Brenda's book. Um, and yeah, I just love the idea of all of us because there's so many ways to have it as well done. You know, it doesn't, you know, it could be spiritual, it could be friendship, it could be, you know, uh, adventures. Friend. Like it doesn't matter. It's not about what you're doing. It's about the quality that you're connecting with mm. who you are doing it with. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. So I guess, can you give us like some um, tips or something or like how people can start a tribe or, you know, maybe yeah. how, what you do in your life, like maybe um, give our listeners some inspiration to start their tribes and buy your book. Absolutely. So, I mean, I'll just start off. Um, let's just assume that someone's been in quarantine situation, social distancing themselves for, I don't know why I would say that, but, you know, for the last two years or so, and they've kind of lost touch with any real connections that they did have. They've been, of course, keeping up on social media and, and posting all the, the awesome stuff in their life, which I am all for posting positive. So I don't want to, I don't want to anything to, to you know, we just don't we just don't post the tough stuff a lot and, and that's okay. But it gives off this sense of um, some people may be, feel a little, you know, like they're not good enough and their life sucks because all everybody's lives are so perfect out there. Um, but anyway, let's say you've disconnected and you're mostly superficial and you didn't even realize it. You thought you have, I got, I got 500, a thousand friends on Facebook, but I've got lots of friends, but now you realize, gosh, those are kind of superficial. Who would I call in the middle of the night if I really needed someone who would come? <laughs> um, so, you know, the first step is uh, just getting yourself out there. You cannot find new friends binge watching Netflix and, you know, and, and sitting in front of your computer, putting yourself out there in situations, um, finding groups, um, meetups, find something you're interest, truly interested in. You know, maybe it's community service. Maybe you'd like to help build something. Maybe you um, are interested in art or music or uh, walking or running. Find groups like that and just sign up, show up, and then keep showing up. And you're going to naturally meet people who ha you have something in common with and you can talk about. And I say, you all, when you go into a new situation, always intend on going at least three times, three times, give it a, a chance because the first time it's going to be uncomfortable. You know, we're putting ourselves out there. We're not used to doing that. And it's not, it's not maybe going to be so much fun the first time, but the second time we feel a little more familiar. The third time you're going to start seeing the same people and then you start connecting with them. And then as you're connecting at those events, you can, if there's someone that you're interested in, you can and you suggest doing something outside of that group. Let's go have coffee. Let's go have lunch, shopping, whatever, whatever it is that, that the two of you have talked about. Uh, so just getting out there and not being, um, not, not going out with the intention of being super interesting. We want to be interested in other people. People love talking about themselves. People love people having interest in them. It's just human nature. It's okay. It's not selfish. It's just the way we are. We were built. Um, but when someone shows a, you know, true interest in you and asks questions, and then they're, they're asking you more questions that validate that they heard what you said, that is the fast track to friendship because people are, do not 
listen or hear very well anymore. They are always thinking to respond instead of thinking to understand and listening to understand. So, um, but, you know, those are a few tips. Get, just getting out of your normal, um, you know, in home, <laughs> getting out of your house. You know, I want to say something to that because I moved here. So I moved here at 57 and knew nobody other than my daughter. And it was during quarantine. So I hung out with her, but I really sensed like, all right, I need to find some peers, you know, and it was, it's like, where do you meet people, especially during this time? But I met you at a network thing um, we went to that happened to be going on during the um, COVID stuff. And I joined that Longmont social meetup and met some people. I went to go play, I hate playing cards. But I went to go play cards at someone's house because it was a group of gathering and no one's looking for you. You really have to put yourself out there. And it was fun and it was scary because I'm so new to the area and I'm going to people's houses that are strangers. But you know what? It's net me some great people and I'm starting to build that tribe here and it does take time. So there is a patience with yourself and others because we are busy and we're all kind of in a transition um but it's yeah it's about really stepping out and i think that's great advice i had to do it full on and it's really helped me and i'm not necessarily people think i'm very bold and i can be but it's not my 24 7 mode i'm more of a recluse well i've been very proud watching you lynn because i met you when you were I mean, gosh, what was about, about a year, a little more than a year ago. Mm -hmm. And I've, and I watched you, you do this and you really took intention and took action. And, you know, another thing to keep in mind as, as you're going out there and putting yourself out there is that other people are, maybe they're making that first step too, and they're not comfortable either. And you can be the hero. You were the hero, Lynn, by, by introducing yourself and, you know, being, interested in them and, and, and pursuing connection and they're going, yay, I have someone to talk to. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. I actually met one of my close friends too, at the same networking group, Lauren. Yeah. So okay. it's kind of fun that my mom and I both, you know, going out and the meetups too. My mom's met a lot of people on meetups. There's just so much opportunity, Facebook groups, so many different things, like you said, to really put yourself out there in a new place or a place that you've been to, to start experiencing more things you're passionate about. So yeah, I love what you're saying, Brenda. Is there anything else you want to say with that? I do. So some people already have some close connections, or at least they would people that they know that they like and they trust, and they want to kind of take it to that tribal level. Mm. So that's the next step. You know, when you first meet someone, they're not going to be in your tribe right away there's it's just it's too much pressure don't even do, go there uh you just want to start having you know building that history um but the people that are already in your life that you have some history with that maybe you've been, been neglecting over the last couple of years um be intentional and start making those coffee dates lunch dates again and talk about find out what's going on there in their life mm -hmm. and they're going to want to know what's going on in your life too. Once when, when you get out there, they want to be listened to what's this done this last two years. What's it been like for you? What's, you know, tell me the, everything, tell me the good, bad, and the ugly. And that's, you know, when people are comfortable enough to kind of share that bad and the ugly, when you get to that point, that's when tribe building is happening. When the vulnerability is out there, you're out there being true, authentic, and vulnerable and sharing the not so great stuff with the few people that, you know, that you love and, and you trust. Um, it's, but you have to put the time in. It needs to, you know, it's, it's like 200 hours or something like that to take someone from just a friend to a friendship and someone who is, um, you know, super important to you. And that can happen in a month or two, or it can happen in years, you know, in decades. It's all up to you, but the 200 hours it has to happen before they can really get to that intimate level with you. So start building those connections that are beyond the surface. Now, and I, I like that because, you know, so many things we are doing on the surface and that's okay. There's acquaintances and there's, you know, they're all part of life and they're a great part of life. 
but the support and the connectedness that you're talking about really does take that time. And you know, you have to trust someone before you're gonna really tell them. But what I find and have found doing women's circles and having my friends is that everyone has the same problems at different <laughs> times pretty much. You know, so you, one of the greatest parts of that connection is to realize that you're not alone. It's like most all women are complaining the same way about their husband or boyfriend, <laughs> you know, like and I'm, I'm sure men have the same exact complaints on their end. Um, so you really stop getting this loneliness or like what you were saying with our pop culture or Facebook, where we might think everyone's all in fluff and rainbows. Um, when you actually have those deep connections, you start realizing, no, there's nothing wrong with you. It's all part of the process. You're learning. Someone else can tell you how it helped. Um, and, you know, it's not about venting, which is very dangerous for women because they, um, they ground their chatter. So it's about like, oh, this is happening. And then someone can maybe ask you a different thing or share how they went through it with that you know they've had the same problem and then they offer different ways mm. and it starts to open you and kind of shift your perspective so i think that vulnerability is really key well absolutely yeah and just to be known and at that deep level and to feel that sense of belonging and acceptance from someone and and the the whole female factor uh we are loving nurturing by nature and you know, we want to mother each other. We want, we love mothering, right? Even before we realize it. Um, but we forget to be mothered at some point, but don't, don't you long for your mother's love still? And, um, we can do that and be that for each other to a certain extent. I like that. I'm glad you brought that up. That's a powerful point is that art of receiving because we give so much and we've been that part of the community we really get challenged to receive or be mothered. Like, oh, something's wrong with me if I need mothering, yet we'll give it to another person, no problem. So it's really a twist that we have to kind of tweak within ourselves because it is very important to be mothered. Yes, yes. So uh, so your girlfriend guru, what do you do with your girlfriends? Can you give us some fun <laughs> what do we things? Do? <laughs> yeah, so I think it's, pretty foundational in tribe altogether to have at least one monthly gathering that's set in stone, you know, not doesn't mean that you have to go every month, but it's a set appointment to see your girlfriends and to show up for each other. Um, so we have what, what I call women who whine on a monthly basis. And it is, it's outlined in the book. It was steps on how to recreate it for yourself, because I think um, it doesn't have to be wine either. It could be tea. It could be knitting. Anything that interests your group of friends, you get together once a month and you do that. Um, for us, it's a basically a two hour Thursday evening happy hour where everyone brings something to contribute. So the hostess doesn't have to do anything, but just have the space ready. Everybody brings either a bottle of wine or an appetizer or dessert to share. And everybody brings their own wine glass because we don't want the hostess to have to do all these dishes either, right? So everybody shows up with their stuff and we just catch up and, and, you know, let everybody know what's going on in our lives and give hugs and squeezes and elbows or whatever people are comfortable with and just reconnect. And sometimes it's six of us and sometimes the kindred clan is all an active force and we have 25 people show up and you just never know who's going to show up because the, the list is enormous. We, we are very inclusive. We want to, we want to see everybody see you. So that's one once a month gathering. And then um, once a year, at least annual retreat, that's two or three days, nights. And that gives you some really concentrated tribe time to um, just come together and hang out without any distractions, getting out of your regular environment with all the demands that are on you. Go somewhere beautiful. <clears throat> it can be three hours away. It can be, you know, an airplane trip. It doesn't matter. Uh, just get somewhere your scenery changes and we just cook for each other, take turns cooking, take turns being served mm. and uh, just have a few activities of bonding and deepening connection moments and it just flies by. So those two things are kind of foundational. And then beyond that, I try to get with each of my tribe members at least once or twice a month just for a one-on-one. -on -one. Let's you know, have coffee. Let's 
um, have lunch, let's have happy hour wine, something. Um, and then of course the drip system, which is social media and texting and all that great stuff. Hey, I'm thinking about you. You just, re- you know, what a nice thing. Just say, I don't need anything from me. I'm just, just thinking about you when you, I thought of you and smiled and just giving people those warm fuzzies. Um, so that's what, you know, I do with my tribe. Mm-hmm. That's so lovely. I yeah. love that. And you know, it's important to share ideas with yeah. people because everyone's different. And you know what? Sometimes we all, you know, we're like, oh, I don't know what to, you know, just always sharing resources. I think my teacher, that was one of the greatest things she said. She's like, women just share. <laughs> you know, like if they know a hairdresser, everyone, like a product, a knowledge, um, ideas. Yeah. And so that's really what you're doing is. So she called us great expanders because of that. Mm. So we just expand the whole everything because we spread. We spread information and love. So great for you to offer some ideas in case someone, you know, isn't sure. They want to deepen it and they don't know, you know. Well, and I love like the wine glass idea and everyone participating and you know, that's, it's a very inexpensive thing to do to gather in that way where everyone's mm-hmm. contributing like a tribe would. So I think those little tips and tricks that you do are really informative for our listeners to get out there and start their own tribe like you want them to do. So thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. One other thing about that is people, we love to show up with something, right? We don't want to just show up empty handed. So it, it takes care of that too. And fulfills that need for us to be, you know, giving something. For sure. For <laughs> sure. I agree with that. I mean, it's always, yeah, nice to show up with a little gift for someone. And or... you know what, but what's nice is if someone doesn't have the time, that's part of the tribe. They're like, it's okay that you came without your glass and your little <laughs> yeah, tree. Absolutely. And you're just riding in by the seat of your pants, which I think Absolutely. is really important too, because some people, you know, they could end up getting in such a fester over not having something. And I think that's yeah. what I love about women is like most people contribute and there's always somebody who's wing nutting it through to get or there. Or who's over the top that like, you know, does the, yeah. helps the wing nut. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we are all overwhelmed and sometimes you just got to fly in and that we want to see you. We don't care about the side dish. Please yeah. <laughs> get, get your butt here. Exactly. <laughs> oh, so incredible. Well, looks like we're at the top of the episode today with Brenda. Is there any last nuggets you want to leave our listeners before we end? Sure. Well, I would love it if you could check out, find my book on Amazon. It's on um, Amazon around the world and also Barnes and Noble, other booksellers online. Hopefully we'll be in some local shops here soon as well. Um, I have a inner circle uh, list that I'm to, to, in order to or, to create these thousand lady tribes. Join my inner circle. You can find it on my website, brendaridgely.com. Just subscribe, and you'll get a weekly friendship tip as well as being be part of the movement to create a thousand lady tribes. So with that, um, that's all I got. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate the opportunity. This has been a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah. It's great talking with you and sharing in such a brilliant topic that really needs to expand. And to, you know, make a thousand tribes is a great goal. Mm-hmm. We'll have to check in and see how things yes. are going on. Thank that. you, Brenda. Absolutely. You guys have a great day. The episode isn't quite over yet, listeners. Or YouTubers. If you haven't given us a like, subscribed, left us a review, or commented on any platform, we would really appreciate you showing us some love here at the Magical Holistic Healing Arts. Remember, hang in water and our grab bag for the podcast. Thanks so much for listening, and stay vibrant out there.